Good morning, and thanks for attending the, this conference. Um, for, as you heard, I'm, my name is Wayne Stamball, and I'm the uh, lead project developer for the KiCad project. Um, I don't know how many of you are familiar with KiCad, but it's an open source design and uh, EDA package that uh, runs on all three major platforms. It's open under the GPL license, and uh, it's, uh, I'm going to do a little simple presentation today. It's going to be a video, and I'm going to narrate it on just a basic design using KiCad and uh, how you would use it. Can let's see. Oh. So what I used, because I like to reuse things, I picked the Arduino. They have a new Maker series of boards out. They actually have a LoRa device called the uh, uh, Maker WAN 1300 board. So I use that as the base, as my, my processor board. Um, I created a, a companion board from the main board so everything lines up correctly when I put, put the two pieces together. I also picked hand solder components. So when you're prototyping, sometimes you don't want to use things with uh, uh, like DFNs with heat sink pads underneath because you don't, if you don't have a reflow oven, you know, it's kind of hard to debug. Um, the other thing I like about the Arduino as well is all their software and development kits are available from GitHub. You can download them for free. And I did this demo in the 5.1 branch. Um, so that's the latest stable release. So can you go ahead and start the video? So here's the, the Arduino part. And I, I, you can download the, um, they provide the Eagle schematics for the schematic and board files. So what I do is I'm going to down, download the project and unzip the archive. And I'm going to convert it. KiCad has a really good Eagle convert it, converter, so I'm going to convert the project into KiCad. And so what I can do is I, the reason I'm going to do this is because I can take the base Arduino board and strip everything off of it except the I.O. connector and the mounting holes. And now I have, a, I have a companion board that matches exactly the Arduino. So that's what's happening here. So what I'm doing is I'm going to go through, I'm going to save it to a file, and here's Here's what I have left. So there's the schematic, which is two pages, and there's the board. So now that I have the schematic done, I'm going to go in here, and I'm going to show you. There's the power supply section, um, and here's the main board. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take everything off this schematic except the I.O. connector. So I'm going to keep the I.O. connector. I'm going to leave the labels on there because all the, so I know what all the pin, you know, all the signal names are, and I don't have to do that myself. So I'm going to do a pretty, oh, okay. Well, we're going to go on anyway. Um, so what I would do next is, now that I've had, I have all this out, I would strip everything out but the I.O. connector, correct? And so what I have left is a schematic with the I.O. connector, and then I would take the board that I had and strip everything off of it but the I.O. connector and the mounting holes, right? So now I have an exact board outline of the Maker 1300, and um, so... We got that, and so what I'm going to do here is, okay, can you advance it to where we left off? Move it up. Okay, so here I, here I that's good. So here I've placed a digital temperature sensor. It's a, a Dallas semiconductor part, and over there I have my I.O. connector, and I'm just adding a couple of LEDs. I've already got the, since this is an I2C device, I've already got the clock and stuff. So. Now that I have my components complete, or my symbols placed on the schematic, I'm going to just automatically annotate them. You can do this manually if you want. And so, I, I, here I made a little mistake. I realized I forgot to put a bypass capacitor. You would think I had never designed anything before. So I had, I had a bypass capacitor here for the, uh, um, for the Dallas chip, the, semi, the Dallas semiconductor chip. So, and this is KiCad, and what's interesting is when you select symbols, you can see in the footprint panel if there's no foot, there's a lot of generic devices, things like um, resistors, LEDs, capacitors. I don't know what size component you're going to use. You have to choose that at, at here later. I'll fill them out. So I wired up my bypass cap. Now I'm going to go through and I'm going to start assigning footprints for, in this case, I used 0805s, obviously, in a production part, you would probably use something a lot smaller. Um, so I have to annotate these again, type in a value, and then add a footprint here. So I'm going to put it your typical 0.1 microfarad cap. And 
add the footprint. And so we can go in here and look at the footprints, go find a SMD caps. And in this case, it's just a simple 0805. And so I'm going to do this for a few components. And I'm not going to do it for all of them because it gets a little redundant. So here's the resistor. Can you fast forward this just a little bit more for me? Since we've kind of already lost a little bit of time. So keep going up. Yeah, so anyway, now I've exported my components, my footprints to the board. So here's my stripped down board now. And so I'm just gonna move the components around where I want them and this is just, you can, you can there is a placer and keycad, but like most placers, if you've ever used EDA packages, if you're like me, I, I never trust auto routers and I don't trust, and no, nobody ever places the boards, the components where I want them and, nobody, no, and auto routers never route the way I would route something. So I tend to do things myself by hand just because I trust my own judgment after doing this for 35 or so years. And so now all my, all my footprints are placed and now I'm gonna route the board. And it's, in this case, I'm just gonna do a simple routing just for, um, just for uh, demonstration purposes. Um, normally I would uh, do the ground plane first, but in this case, I'm just showing you how, just a simple manual routing of everything. And one thing I did in the video that I realized I missed is <laughs> you'll see I didn't wire the 3.3 volt supply up which I fix later, it'll suddenly mysteriously appear. Um, so I wire all my signals up, I create and my ground planes, I'm gonna poke, I'm gonna create a, a ground plane on the back side of this board to, um, and I just poke through my, I use a V and just poke them through like you would normally do. Okay, now this, the, the original board's a four layer. For this design, it says, since it's simple and I only have 20 minutes to talk, it's gonna be really an extremely simple example but we're just gonna go through and poke these through to the other side and then we'll, we'll, do, the, uh, we'll do a simple design. We'll do the, uh, um, the ground plane on the other side. We get a chance. So we're just gonna let this run through here for a second. It's pretty simple. And all these, you can set the trace widths, the, top, the clearances, there's a whole slew of settings that you can do with your normal design rule parameters that you would have with any EDA package. I just use the defaults for the case of this, for this case, because like, like I said, we're kind of limited on time here and what we can do. So as we go through, we're gonna route this out. And now I'm gonna finish this up here, this last trace, except the one I forgot. And you can see keycads basically like any other EDA tool. I mean, they're all slightly different. They, you know, they all work a little different, but the capabilities there and there, you can see I have the original outline of the board. So now I'm gonna draw my uh, filled zone and I'm gonna select it, you know, con connect everything to the ground pad. And I'm, I'm now working on the bottom side of the board. So I'm gonna draw the, in KiCad, you don't need to draw your zone, your filled zones inside the board outline because the, the, the clipper, the geometry clipper will clip all the, it'll, depending on the tolerances, will clip and there's, there's your ground plane. And you can see here where it picked up the, the nodes, the vias, and there's, there's my board. Now, one thing I did do is on these connectors, I flip them to the other side of the board because I want them to mate up to the, the Arduino board. So, so I flip those on the other side so the silk screens will be on the, the bottom side of the board so when I go to solder my components on, I'll know that that's the side that the board's on. So now, here's my finished board. And so I go through, I'm gonna get rid of the two inner layers. Um, you, if you were doing a more complex design, obviously you would use those as your power and ground layers. And, and then you could use both sides of the boards. I mean, there's, and you can see by this, you know, just this design, now here's the 3D output. So if I want to look at, it gives me a reasonably good idea of my, what my, board, my final board's going to look like. So there's my design and I got it. So now we go through the standard age old process of creating Gerber files. I mean, most, most board, it's kind of an industry standard. It's been around forever. Most board files, except 
or most board houses except Gerber's. But these days, the, the number, of pe number of board houses that directly accept KiCad board files is really getting quite large. So you can, there's a lot of places around now that you can just send the KiCad board file. They'll post process it and do that all for you. And then you can have your boards like in the United States, I think like Osh Park does a really good job. Here in Europe, there's uh, Eisler. They do a nice job. So, so the nice thing is, so you can export um, so you can export your Gerber files and then you, know, you can load them with a Gerber viewer. So that's what I did here. These are my, you know, my photo plot files that I would send to a board manufacturer to have the boards made. And you can see this is just KiCad's Gerber viewer. So you can kind of look and get an idea of what, you're, what you designed and, and see if, you know, it's always a good, job, good idea to double check your, your plots. Anybody that's been around long enough and made bad boards knows that that's like, can get you in trouble. So the next, one thing that KiCad does really nice is if, if you have step models for your, um, all your footprints, you can actually create a step file. So if you're doing a mechanical design, like you want to do some packaging, you can actually get a step export of the board. So here I'm, here I'm saving, I'm creating the, the step model of that board, right? The entire board design. And so I have a 3D modeling tool, in which case here I use FreeCAD. Um, but you can use, you know, any of the commercial ones as long as they read step 214. And there's my model. So that's actually geometrically correct. Assuming all my footprints are geometrically correct, that board's geometrically correct. Okay, so now I have, so that board's, a that sample's a little canned only because of time. But one thing that you might want to do is you might want to just put that on one board. If you take the IO connectors off the original Arduino board, so what I did was I exported it again and I just added that schematic to the original design with my little temperature sensor and that stuff on it. And so what I did here was I removed the I.O. connectors from the original board. And there's plenty of room on that board. With, I didn't rip up any of the, uh, the connections between the, the communications chip and the micro. And I can put my design in, in there. Can you put me back on the slideshow, please? So... The, the reuse is really nice. So anytime I can use a board that's already, you know, been designed, works well, I have the, the, the drivers for. So the Arduino happens to be a, one of my personal favorites, but it's a nice, there's a lot of other people out there doing similar things. But the fact that I can get the schematics and the, and the board files and download them and use them directly saves you time. So when you're prototyping, it's always a good idea to think about that. So just a little bit more on KiCad. If you get stuck, there's, there's always the documentation. We have a really active user forum and a lot of the lead development team hangs out there. So if you, know, if you get stuck, there's usually really good help. There's actually a company now offering paid support for KiCad. So if you're in a commercial environment and you have to get somebody on the phone and talk to them, a couple of the lead developers actually work for that company. So that's really a good... Um, resource for commercial developers. Um, if you're interested in, in contributing to KiCad, there's plenty, always plenty to do, like symbols, even, even if you're not a coder, there's always things like documentation, translations, um, footprints, symbol libraries. I mean, there's always plenty to do. Um, you can always um, contribute. There's also, you can donate. We have two donation um, avenues. One is through CERN, and that's the, yeah, that's the CERN that you know from Geneva, Switzerland. They're one of our partners. And we can all, you can also do, donate through the Linux Foundation. And uh, if, you're, if you're in the States, there's some tax advantages to using the Linux Foundation. And I did want to announce something. If you, last year, KiCad, KiCad's become a, what a, a lot of people in this room may not know that KiCad's a big enough project that we had our own conference last year. It was called KeyCon. It was held in Chicago in April of last year. And um, I have to say, it was one of the best con uh, conferences I've ever been to. So this year, we're gonna come to Europe. So KeyCon 2020 is gonna be at CERN. So if you've ever wanted to visit CERN, that's a good excuse. You can go to KeyCon 2020. There's a link here to the website. Their tickets aren't available yet. They haven't gotten that far. Probably in about another month. They'll start, they'll start going on sale. But, and I'm sure the space will be limited because it's going to be limited to whatever CERN can handle in terms of the number of people. But it should be a good conference. And I can tell you from last year, 
one of the things that always amazes me is as when I use, when, when I see what people do with KiCad is it's all over the map. We have guys doing like simple fun things. Like somebody made this little three, this little three dimensional LED coffin, which was pretty cool at, at, at the conference last year. And then we have guys doing, doing corporate work. There's a gentleman in Australia who has this just crazy ridiculous board that's like this massive F, multi FPGA board that has 27 layers and I think the last time I heard it was like between 200,000 and a quarter of a million nodes, individual nets. And that's a complex board for even for any app, any EDA application. But so when, you know, a lot of times I get the feeling that people think KeyCAD's just for making two layer boards, but that demo was just by virtue of the fact that that's all I had time to do. So if you, if you really need, you know, big, if you're gonna interest in doing big stuff, KeyCAD can handle it, so. So I'd like to thank everybody for coming here. Um, I'd especially like to thank the, uh, the organizers of this talk um, who invited me. It was kind of a last minute thing because I got to leave here today because I'm giving a talk at Fosdom um, on Saturday. So, um, and I, I, it goes without saying, a project like KeyCAD doesn't have, I mean, I get to be the guy that stands up here and gives the talks, but there's a lot of people that help key, that work on KeyCAD and they deserve as much credit as I do. And I like to always thank our donors because that helps keep the project moving. And so thank you for attending and uh, it's the end. Thank you. Yeah, Wayne, thank you so much. I was just curious, who was already familiar with KiCad before this presentation started? Already oh, quite, so, quite a few people. Well, I'm, it's, it's great because like one of the, I always laugh because one of the things that I say is when I, when I do talks at like the KiCad conference or yep. the FOSDOM, they're already, everybody knows, so it's a bit like preaching to the choir. You know, everybody knows. Yep. They're already open source users, they already use KiCad. So yep. just, it's nice to get in front of a, a, a different audience. So yep. I see there's some people who aren't familiar with KiCad. So. Maybe nice to put uh, the, the slide before this slide on, uh, because then people can make pictures if they want to find more information about KiCad. Yeah, Meanwhile, like is there a question uh, for Wayne? We have time for one or two questions. No questions. No questions? Well, you'll be around a little he, bit. I will or? be here. Yeah, if you want to, if you see me and you have any key questions about KeyCAD, I will, I'll be out roaming around for about another hour. And then I got to ca catch ca you real quickly. Yeah, I got to <laughs> catch a train cool. to Brussels here. Okay, shortly. thank you so much for being here. A warm applause for Wayne Stambo. Thank you.